Yes, students. So, welcome back to one more session of your D block chapter. So, I already started the D block chapter uh, explaining you the different trends based on the electronic configuration. After we have learned electronic configuration, we have come to a concept called how to learn uh, the different trends in atomic and ionic radii. Okay, please go through the videos carefully and keep noting it on a daily basis. After atomic and ionic radii, we have also dealt the concept of uh, enthalpy of atomization, which I have explained in terms of uh, uh, how much, uh, like, uh, what is the amount of energy. Uh, required to, or uh, amount of delta H A H naught A uh, formed when one mole of gaseous atom is obtained from its respective elements. Now I will be dealing with ionization enthalpy and related questions with this. Right. So whenever we speak about ionization enthalpy, we have already studied in grade 11. What is ionization enthalpy? Basically, the amount of energy required to remove an electron from the valence shell. This is we have been studying the same since I think uh, ninth class, isn't it? So I am going to supply certain amount of energy. So with that energy, whichever the electron which is present in the outermost shell, we are going to pull that out once this is done then we're going to the inner shell now for us the concept is how are we going to explain the ionization enthalpy values in uh, your 3d series 4d and 5d the many questions asked based on 3d 4d and 5d series first we'll complete of 3d series and come back to your 4d and 5d series so whenever we speak, speak about 3D series, so I have a tabular column which is given me your NCRT, I have just noted down here and let us start. Now how is this question asked in the exam? Suppose, they will not ask you what is ionization enthalpy, nothing of that sort. Suppose if they ask you a question like this. Now basically this is your NCRT question, let us see how to answer this question. So how would you account for the irregular variation of ionization enthalpy in the first series? Okay. Now as I said, now if this is an atom, the outermost electron, I have to separate certain energy and pull out that electron electron next into the n minus 1 shell the same concept when i go with the 3d series we very well know d block elements are uh, when we study 3d series 4d 5d and 6d now these are trends for your 3d series where you have ionization enthalpy one first ionization enthalpy second and third let us see the anomalies of the trends in this particular thing. Now, I said, well, how do you account means? I have to explain in simple words. Now, you have to first important thing you have to write is ionization enthalpy. What does it depend on? Ionization enthalpy depends on nuclear charge. Okay, right. This is the most important concept. So, nu nuclear charge. Higher the nuclear charge, more is the ionization enthalpy. I have to apply extra energy to pull out that electron. Yes, isn't it? Now, how is this changing? When I am moving from left to right in the period. Now, this is your 3D series as I said. Now, see how is the uh, ionization enthalpy? Is it increasing or decreasing? Less de increasing, 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 it is increasing. So, when I move from left to right in the period, left to right in a period what is happening to ionization enthalpy ie values are increasing why is it increasing as we know as i move from left to right the atomic size decreases simple logic so why does it decrease uh, why does it increase as atomic size decreases why is atomic size decreasing because we very well know i already told in the first video this electron enters into the same penultimate shell n minus 1 d shell only yes it keeps on d1 d2 d3 d4 like that it goes on adds till it uh, ends with 3d10 correct okay. so what should i write since electrons get or electrons add to the same Penultimate shell. Okay, this is your basic information. Penultimate shell. Now, after writing that, they want to explain us the whole trend, isn't it? Now, this this information gives them the basic thing. This is done. Now, after writing that, now start with the table. Now, we have to see when I I have marked the anomaly with red, so it's easy for me. In cop chromium, when I have to see chromium first ionization enthalpy and chromium second ionization enthalpy, observe carefully. Chromium basically first ionization enthalpy is already high. So, what happens? What is the reason? So, once you finish off this basic thing, erase that. Okay, I'm erasing this part and let us start with chromium. Now, when I take a chromium, the configuration of chromium is 3D5, 4S1. So, this is 3D5, 4S1. Now, the first ionization enthalpy is 653 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so first IE1 is 653 kilojoules per mole. Now, when I have to take out, now I have to take out one electron from this Yes or no? You are going to take this electron out from here. This is the outermost shell. Done. So once this is done, first ionization enthalpy, this becomes zero. 
Now I am going to, uh, what should I do now? This becomes a CR plus 1. Now, after taking out, I have to apply again energy I2 that is how much? 1592 kilojoules per mole. Double. Why? Why is it so much? Because I, I have to remove electron from the half filled d orbital. That is very important. This half filled is highly stable. Half filled, it is highly stable. So that is the reason IE2 of chromium is very high, higher uh, than IE1 of chromium. So please understand the concept. IE1 is higher. Okay. Then then double. It has become double because when I apply the second energy, I have to remove electron from the 3D5 configuration, which is half filled and it is highly stable. That is the first anomaly. Now I'm going to explain the concept here with zinc. Right now, let us erase this chromium and write for zinc. Now, zinc the same concept. What am I writing for zinc? That means number 30 and it is 3d10, 3d10, 4s2. Now, I have to take out one electron. Now, I have to apply first ionization enthalpy. How much is it? It is 906 kilojoules per mole. Now, I have to take out one electron. Suppose if I am taking first one electron, Zn plus 1, so this becomes 4s1. Yes, then again you have to take out one more electron Zn plus 2. This becomes 0 second. Now again come back. I have to make uh, now I suppose if I have to take out one more electron from here. Just see this 3829 kilojoules per mole I require. Why? Because 3d10 value is I have to apply I2 because uh, okay, how much is this? 1734 kilojoules per mole. Now, how much? I have to remove extra electron from where? I have to remove it from and fully stable or completely filled, completely filled configuration. Can be completely filled configuration. That is D configuration. So, when it is highly stable, automatically the ionization enthalpy will become maximum. So, I started explaining from left to right. I explained in terms of chromium because that is showing uh, uh, this one, uh, it has half filled. I explained in terms of zinc because it is fully filled. So, you can generalize the answer and write in this way, right? Now, uh, I. <coughs> Let us erase this and come back to this question. I did this. I get the basic information. Now, let me do this question. What does this question say? Why is ionization enthalpy smooth and sharp as smooth and as, as, is not smooth and as sharp in SNP block elements? Okay. Now, what are they doing here? They've given me generally. Now, they're comparing with the S block elements and P block elements. Now, what happens What I when mean, we study D block? The first important concept is your this ionization enthalpy as i said it depends upon nuclear charge nuclear charge indirectly depends upon atomic radii correct now when i have to see uh, uh, along the group along the period and along the group yes important i have to compare between s block p block and d block now what is happening in d block elements here your effect of lanthanide contraction is acting isn't it you're not finding that lanthanide contraction in s and p block so because of this lanthanide contraction first important thing this lanthanide contraction is causing or it is making or the because of this lanthanide contraction what do we say the size is going to decrease the atomic radius decreases when the atomic radius decreases i have to apply extra energy or the ionization enthalpy will vary isn't it ups and downs yes so first important thing lanthanide contraction because of this atomic radii decreases when atomic radii decreases nuclear charge increases when nuclear charge increases ionization enthalpy increases so this is one concept of d which is varying from snp the next important now what if we see this is we have seen this is in a group right we have seen it in the group when i speak in about uh, this one in a period now as i said the configuration d5 configuration and d10 stable configuration isn't it are you finding that in uh, your s block and p block no so this d5 and d10 configuration did because we can also write <coughs> effect of stability effect of stability that is d5 and and d10 configuration effect of stability that is d5 and d10 configuration both also affect 
ionization enthalpy which is higher so i can generalize d block x giving these two concepts along a period and along a group